Anthony Hartwig here with a Gerard basketball player profile. I am joined by Thomas Cardero, one of the top players in the area this year so far. Tom, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Yep, thank you for having me. All right, so this Gerard basketball team has been so fun to watch this year. You've taken kind of the next step as a team. Last year, you were the thorn in everyone's side of the NE8. This year so far, you're the top dog. You're in the top spot right now in the NE8. What's been the difference between last year and this year from your perspective and, and the reason this Gerard team has taken that next step as a basketball team? Um, I think a little bit uh, has been like the mindset, you know, we, we've really, you know, set our sights on a lot of those, uh, you know, bigger achievements, you know, winning the conference, going far in the tournament. Uh, and a lot of it also is just growing as a team, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of the seniors on this team, we've been playing together since, you know, fourth, fifth grade, you know, and we've really uh, grown together as that time's gone on. You know, you're not going to get through a season inside this conference either without some adversity, and you guys have definitely faced your own share. How have you bounced back from that? And every time you lose, you're right back into it, and here you are still at the top of the conference. So how have you bounced back from the adversity this year? Uh, you know, we just keep working hard. You know, um, one of the things that one of our uh, our coaches tells us before every game, you know, if you win this game, you're one and zero. It doesn't matter, you know, how far you're into the season, you know, you just got to take it game by game. And, you know, if you lose, you got to come back the next day and work even harder at practice and just put your focus on the next game. You know, we look at the the scores in the NE8, whether it be a game that you're playing in or a game that other teams are playing in, it seems like everything is close. I mean, there are a ton of close games this year. Um, you've been on the right end of some, you've been on the wrong end of some. What's it been like for this team to play in so many close game scenarios and have that kind of experience down the stretch? I think it I think it really helps us, especially, you know, come times like playoffs and, you know, big games like we have this week where, you know, we could clinch, you know, a conference title. You know, we just, you know, we want to learn from these games, you know, win or loss. We want to take the good uh, and keep using that and take the bad and uh, start to build off of it. All right, when the game is close down the stretch, what's going through your mind as a player? What are some things you're telling yourself to keep yourself calm, cool, and collected down the stretch? Um, you know, you just want to win the game, you know. Um, you know, you're so focused. You you don't you don't think about anything else that's going on, you know, outside of the game. You know, it like you have to have, you know, 110% focus on the game coming up and everything that's going on, whether it's, you know, you're in a timeout, you're standing at the free throw line, everything has got to have your complete focus. You have a lot of great teammates that help you, but when teams you know do a scouting report on Gerard, there are two players that they, without a doubt, circle the most on their scouting report. That's you and Gus Johnson. You guys are a, like a tandem, a one-two punch. What's it been like going through this with him and, and being able to kind of have him on your team and and uh, succeed right right along with him? I mean, it's it's been great. You know, uh, you know, there might be a night. You know, my shots may not be falling, but you know. Gus gets going, you know. Um, it's just been really good having a teammate like him. You know, he can make some plays a lot, and uh, you know, it, you know, have a lot of other teammates that can make plays too. So it's really nice having that. I want to ask you about this Gerard community. Every time we get to a Gerard game, whether it be home or away, the student section pops up. The community is there to support you guys. What's it like knowing that you have such a big following behind you? Oh, it's it's great. You know, there there's no better feeling. You know. It, it really, you know, when we're at home, you know, it feels like we have a true, you know, home court advantage. And even when we're away, we still have a lot of supporters and even sometimes more than, you know, the home team. So it's just it's just really good to, you know, have that behind you as well. And you talk about that home court advantage. We feel it in every sport when Gerard's in that gym. Every team has something about their gym that makes it feel like home to them. What is it about your home gym that makes it feel like it's a home for, for you? I, I think just, you know, growing up in that gym, playing in it so much, you know, and we all have that experience in there. And I think I think another one is just having that home crowd, you know, R regardless the game, regardless the occasion, you know, we're always going to have a bunch of people packed in that gym. All right. I want to talk about your family legacy at Gerard because there's a lot of Carderos in that Gerard alumni group. Um, your family has been, you know, loud and proud Gerard for a long time. What's it like continuing the family legacy as an Indian? Uh, you know, it's it's great. You know, um, my dad went to Gerard. You know, I have a lot of family, a lot of relatives. Um, my my cousin's still the the wrestling coach here. It's 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 a good feeling. You know, to to be continuing that legacy. 
how much uh, like support have you felt from family members that maybe even you don't even talk to that much that are like right behind you and rocking you on because you're keeping their family name proud in the, in the hallways of Gerard. It feels so great. You know, it's, it's overwhelming sometimes, you know, it's, it's always, it's always just, you know, a good boost of, uh, of morale, you know, to have, you know, have them supporting me. Does it ever turn into pressure at all? Like, Hey, like, this is my family. This is what they've done in Gerard. I have to live up to that. No, not really. You know, um, it, it does kind of help with a little motivation though. Um, but I really don't, see it as pressure as much as more or less just motivation to me what else do you use as motivation you're such a fierce competitor you have to have other things as well that keep you motivated and keep that competitive engine going what other things do you use to motivate yourself well i'd say the main thing is you know i just want to win you know at the end of the day that's that's what i'm worried about is you know are, are we winning or losing and um i'd say another thing is you know i want to play at the next level um you know uh, i aspire to you know playing college after high school and, you know, just going out and competing every night, I think is really going to uh, help me prepare for the next level. When you have dreams of playing at the next level, you obviously have to put the work in and it's a lot of work that people don't see. It's outside of practice. It's getting extra gym time. What kind of things have you done to kind of, you know, up your level and, and try to get yourself prepared for next level basketball? Uh, well, I think, I think the main thing has just been, you know, those extra hours, you know, outside of practices, you know, during the summer, early mornings, late nights. Um, another thing that I, I think has really helped me um, over the last couple of years was uh, playing uh, AAU basketball with, uh, with PK Flash, you know, Pittsburgh-based AAU team. They're great coaches, you know, great teammates. Uh, I got to travel a lot with them and play some, uh, some really good competition. You know, you are, speaking about coaches, you are blessed to be coached by one of the more respected high school coaches in the area with Coach Hannon. What's it been like to be under him, and what has he taught you, not just about basketball, but about yourself and, and about life in general? Uh, I mean, it's it's good to have a coach like him, you know, um, very personable. Um, you know, he'll, he'll pull you to the side, talk to you about something. Um, he's helped me a lot uh, with this, you know, college process to, you know, finding out what's the best play, place to um, – not just to play, but, you know, go for academics as well. So it's just great to have a, a coach like him, especially these last four years. Do you think there's one piece of advice he's given you over your career that is going to stick with you after you leave Gerard, whether you're playing at the next level or or not? Um, I'd say the one thing is is rebounding, you know. <laughs> um, he's always kind of preached that to me, um, you know, and I've, I've kind of taken that to heart, you know, and rebounding is something that, you know, I love to do on the court, you know. It's, it's just, you know, something I love to do. And he's really preached that. All right. As we talk about your work ethic and the work you've put in, obviously you didn't start out, come out of the, out of the womb with a really good basketball talent. Um, what is, what was the hardest skill that you kind of had to master throughout your basketball career? The one that you struggled with the most that now you're sitting your senior year and you're saying, okay, I've really gotten to that point where I'm good at this, but it really took me a long time to get it. I'd say the main thing was probably ball handling, you know, grow, growing up, you know, I was, I was, you know, big, uh, you know, for my age, you know, always growing up. So I was always just one of those kids, you know, just throw it to him in the post and then just one dribble, shoot it over a kid. But, um, you know, as as I developed as a player, it became more and more important to to be able to handle the ball um, and, ha and handle pressure. And I think that's uh, one thing that uh, even my coach Hannon and my dad have, um, you know, really harped on over these last few years. With the success you're having, eyes get locked on you, and specifically the eyes of the younger kids at Gerard, whether they be junior high, uh, middle school kids, whether it be elementary kids, kids that want to be in your shoes one day when they get into high school. What's it feel like to you that knowing that you're kind of a role model to these young athletes that want to be in, in Gerard's shoes and Gerard's high school program when they grow up? You know, it, feel, it feels surreal to, you know, have, have people looking up to me, you know, whether it's, you know, like you said, in elementary school, middle school, to have people looking up to me and, and wanting to be in my shoes. It's, it's just a surreal feeling, you know, that I'll, I'll always remember. What about the younger players on this team and the way they are able to look up to you as well as a leader and, and the future of this Gerard program really being hinged on the legacy you leave? How much have you helped impact this Gerard team this year? Well, you know, I, I just want to, you know, help help build them up, you know, for these coming years, you know, when they're going to be the ones making big plays down the stretch and handling pressure. It, it's I just want to help build them up and help them become better basketball players and better people as well. 
as we talk about you at the next level, what kind of things do you look for in a program and in a, in a coaching staff that you want to be coached by in the future? Um, well, I probably coaching staff, you know, I want, I want coaches, you know, that are going to be supportive, but are also, you know, they're going to get on me when they need to. Um, you know, when looking at a school, you know, I want a place that I'm going to be able to go play. You know, I don't want to sit my first year or two years and just not have any playing experience. And then I also want, you know, a good place uh, that's going to have really good academics as well. Obviously, all those things are more important than this next question, but it's also a factor. Um, do you want to travel or do you want to be closer to home? Which one or would you lean towards if that was a factor at all? Um, you know, I, I wouldn't mind either if, if I were to pick one. I would probably say travel, you know, I want to, I want to go out, see some things, you know, play new competition, but at the same time, you know, it's also, it's also nice to stay home, you know, be close to my family, be close to Gerard too, you know, um, but if I had to pick, I would say I'd probably want to travel. If that happens, you'd be living on your own somewhere or far away from home. What would be the one thing that would make you the most nervous about being away from the home? Um, just, just being away from, from family and people I know, you know, um, I haven't always been the best, you know, with, with meeting people and getting to know people. Um, but I think that's, you know, one challenge that would be, you know, really good for me to overcome is to uh, learn to meet new people and learn to open myself up to new, uh, new people. What do you think is one comfort of home that you'd miss the most or that you would think that you'd take the, take the most for granted if you moved away? Um, definitely the food, you know, um, having home cooked meals or, you know, uh, just lo local places to eat. I think I'd probably miss that the most. All right. We have a lot of great local restaurants, especially in Gerard. What's your go-to spot? My go-to spot? I would probably have to go with uh, Jib Jab, the hot dog shop. Nice. Um, what about the, you know, you brought up the home cooked meals. Um, what's your family's best meal? What's the one that when, when this is being put on the dinner table, gets you the most excited? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I would say uh, there's a, probably a couple to choose from i would say either probably mac and cheese lasagna or uh or beef now you brought up the academics as well that's really important to you what kind of things do you want to study in your future what kind of career path do you see yourself partaking in um so the main thing for for undergrad uh i was looking for exercise science for the four-year bachelor degree um and then you know if if past college you know basketball doesn't work out um I was hoping to um, to also go to grad school and get a, a doctorate in physical therapy to become a physical therapist. Is there a life experience that kind of drew you to wanting to be a physical therapist? Is there something that's like a, a therapist maybe in your life that said, you know, showed you that how much that job could be rewarding, or is it just something that you fell into? I think I think it's just something I kind of fell into. Um, in the last couple of years, I, I had to go to physical therapy myself. I had uh, tendonitis in my Achilles and in my knee as well. And, you know, kind of being there all the time, it was like, you know, this this seems like something that I want to do. And there's also kind of that aspect where, you know, I could still kind of stay around sports because I could still work with athletes and stuff like that. What do you think is the biggest form of, of adversity that you've had to face so far in your career? And then how did you get past it? Ooh, the biggest thing of adversity. I mean, I, I think was I think it was probably last year or sophomore year, you know, uh, to, you know, kind of slower seasons. My sophomore season, uh, we had a, you know, we didn't have the best record. We had a lot of young guys. Um, but, you know, over the summer and the off season, we worked really hard. And then that junior year, we started out really strong. And then we kind of, you know, started to slow down as, uh, as the year went on. And then uh, we obviously – had a, a first round exit in the playoffs. And I think that just motivated me even more to just, you know, have that drive to win and that hunger to win. All right. Before we let you go, I want to give you the chance to give a shout out to your support system, all the people that are there for you in the stands and whether they're in the stands or not, they're there. They're always there for you. They're supporting you. And they've done that throughout your whole career. Uh, obviously I, I want to um, shout out my, my parents, my mom, my dad, uh, my two siblings, my my older sister, my younger brother, who have you know helped you know shape me into the person I am. Uh, my grandparents also, you know, they've been really supportive of me. They've always you know been you know really good support systems. Um, you know, my coaches, uh, Coach Hannon, Coach Subban, Coach Carton, our coaching staff, um, and then also Coach Lindowski and Coach Madelon, my two uh, AAU coaches, 
uh, and then uh, all the all the teammates that I've had, you know, all over the years that, you know, ever since I started playing basketball, I probably can't remember every single one of them. But, um, you know, they're they they've been very important in this journey. All right, Thomas, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. We wish you the best of luck the rest of this basketball season and in your future endeavors. And we can't wait to talk to you again real soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me.